and gentlemen, in front of you is your cabin pitch attendant for this flight. I am Marilou Stelicano at your service and I am together with you to discover literature as a tool to assert one's unique identity and to better understand other people. On behalf of BSF 3D Airline, it is my pleasure to welcome you all aboard flight number three with service to our new adventure for today. Take a moment to review the safety instructions card in your seat pocket and prepare your pen and paper for our discussion. Today, while we are on our trip, let us have a time to discover and unlock a few things. Are you ready? I bet you're ready. Have you ever wondered what makes other people unique from each other? And how do you understand other people? Let's try to figure it out by doing this. I have here pictures wherein the only thing that you should do is to pick either American or Filipino. I will give you three seconds for each picture. Are you ready? All right, let's proceed. Let's start with number one. What do you think is the answer for number one? If your answer for number one is American, you got it right. Congratulations. Take this ticket as your reward. How about number two? What do you think is the answer for number two? If your answer for number two is Filipino, you got it right. Congratulations. Take this ticket as a reward. How about number three? What do you think is the answer for number three? If your answer for number three is Filipino, congratulations! Take this ticket as your reward. How about number four? The last number. What do you think is the answer for number four? If your answer for number four is American, you're right. Congratulations. Take this ticket as a reward. Congratulations to those students who got the right answers. And if you got it wrong, do not worry. Better luck next time. And please listen to our discussion attentively because we have many activities waiting ahead. And to those who got rewards, please do keep your rewards because that will serve as a ticket to our next adventure. All right, I know you were excited. Let's go ahead and move on. But first, I do have a few questions for you. Before anything else, I would like to ask, how did you came up with your answers? How did you know that it is either American or Filipino? Do you have any idea of what we're going to discuss today? Oh, it's okay if you don't know it. I'll introduce it to you. Our discussion for today will talk about discovering literature as a tool to assert one's unique identity and to better understand other people. At the end of this episode, you are expected to Number one, identify the different identity of an individual. Number two, create your personal chart identity. Number three, recognize the local color of the selection. Along with this adventure, we are supposed to answer two questions. Number one, what is literature? And number two, how did literature become a tool to assert one's unique identity? Let us start to unlock this adventure. Let's go! What is literature? Literature is a term used to describe written and sometimes spoken material, derived from the Latin word literature, meaning writing form with letters. Literature most commonly refers to works of the creative imagination, including poetry, drama, 
fiction, non-fiction, and in some instances, journalism and song. How does literature become a tool in identifying one's trait and understanding other people? Earlier, you had an activity wherein you have to identify whether it's Filipino or American. You have provided your answers based on what you know. Winter clothes are what Americans wear because of the cold weather. Pagmamano and celebrating fiesta are what you grow up with. That is why you consider it as a Filipino activity or doing. The images we had are few examples of culture of America and Philippines. Aligned with culture is literature. And since our focus is literature, I know you love hearing stories, aren't you? Let us hear this story that is written by Alejandro Rosas and is entitled, We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers. Listen attentively and take note all of the details in the story because after this, we are going to have a discussion and activity. Buckle up your seatbelts and we are about to take off. Keep your rewards and gain more for our next adventure. We Filipinos are mild drinkers by Alejandro R. Rosas. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. We drink for only three good reasons. We drink when we are very happy. We drink when we are very sad. And we drink for any other reason. When the Americans recaptured the Philippines, they built an airbase a few miles from our barrio. Yankee soldiers became a very common sight. I met a lot of GIs and made many friends. I could not pronounce their names. I could not tell them apart. All Americans look alike to me. They all look white. One afternoon, I was plowing our rice field with our carabao named Datu. I was barefooted and stripped to the waist. My pants that were made from abaca fibers and woven on homemade looms were rolled up to my knees. My bolo was at my side. An American soldier was walking on the highway when he saw me. He headed towards me. I stopped plowing and waited for him. I noticed he was carrying a half pint bottle of whiskey. Whiskey bottles seem part of the American uniform. Hello, my little brown brother, he said, patting me on the head. Hello, Joe, I answered. All Americans are called Joe in the Philippines. Any bars in this town? He asked. That was usually the first question American soldiers asked when they visited our barrio. I am sorry, Joe, I replied. There are no bars in this barrio. Oh, you know where I could buy more whiskey? No, Joe, I am sorry. We do not drink whiskey. Here, have a swig. You have been working too hard, he said, offering me his half-filled bottle. No, thank you, Joe, I said. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. Well, don't you drink at all? Yes, Joe, I drink, but not whiskey. Oh, what do you drink? I drink lambanog. Jungle juice, eh? I guess that is what the GIs call it. You know where I could buy some? I have some you can have, but I do not think you will like it. I like it all right, don't worry about that, I have drunk everything, whiskey, rum, brandy, tequila, gin, champagne, sake, vodka, he mentioned many more that I cannot spell. Say, you sure drink a lot, don't you? I not only drink a lot, but I drink anything. I drank Chanel number no. 5 when I was in France. In New Guinea, I got sauce and Williams shaving lotion. When I was laid up in the hospital, I got pie-eyed with medical alcohol. On my way here in this transport, I got stoned on a torpedo juice. You ain't kidding when you say I drink a lot. So let's have some of that jungle juice, eh? Alright, I said. I will just take this carabao to the mud hole. Then we can go home and drink. You sure love that animal, don't you? I should, I replied. It does half of my work. Why don't you get two of them? I did not answer. 
I unhitched that two from the blow and led him to the mud hole. Joe was following me. Datu lay in the mud and was going whoosh whoosh. Flies and other insects flew from his back and hovered in the air. A strange warm odor rose out of the mud. A carabao does not have any sweat glands except on its nose. It has to wallow in the mud or bathe in a river about every three hours. Otherwise, it runs amok. Datu shook his head and his widespread horns scooped the muddy water on his back. He rolled over and was soon covered with slimy mud. An expression of perfect contentment came into his eyes. Then he swished his tail and Joe and I had to move back from the mud hole to keep from getting splash. I left Datu in the mud hole. Then turning to Joe, I said, Let us go. And we proceeded towards my house. Joe was curiously looking around. This place is full of coconut trees, he said. Don't you have any coconut trees in America? I asked. No, he replied. Back home, we have the pine tree. What is it like? Oh, it is tall and stately. It goes straight up to the sky like a skyscraper. It symbolizes America. Well, I said. The coconut tree symbolizes the Philippines. It starts up to the sky, but then it leaves sway down to earth, as if remembering the land that gave it birth. It does not forget the soil that gave it life. In a short while, we arrive in my Nipa house. I took a bamboo ladder and leaned it against a tree. Then I climbed the ladder and picked some calamansi. What's that? Joe asked. Philippine lemon. I answered, we will need this for our drinks. Oh, chasers. That is right, Joe. That is what the soldiers call it. I filled my pockets and then went down. I went to the garden well and washed the mud from my legs. Then we went up to the bamboo ladder to my hut. It was getting dark. So I filled a coconut shell with coconut oil, dipped a wick in the oil, and lighted the wick. It produced a flickering light. I unstrapped my bolo and hung it on the wall. Please sit down, Joe, I said. Where? He asked, looking around. Right there, I said, pointing to the floor. Joe sat down on the floor. I sliced the calamansi in halves, took some rough salt and laid it on the high foot table. I went to the kitchen and took the bamboo tube where I kept my lambanog. I poured some lambanog on two polished coconut shells and gave one of the shells to Joey. I diluted my drink with some of Joey's whiskey. It became milky. We were both seated on the floor. I poured some of my drink on the bamboo floor. It went through the slits to the ground below. Hey, what are you doing? said Joe, throwing good liquor away. No, Joe. I said, it is a custom here to always give back to the earth a little of what we have taken from the earth. Well, he said, raising his shell, here's to the end of the war. Here's to the end of the war, I said, also lifting my drink. I gulped my drink down. I followed it with a slice of calamansi dipped in rough salt. Joe took his drink but reacted in a peculiar way. His eyes pop out like a frog's and his hands clutch his throat. He looked as if he had swallowed a centipede. Quick, a chaser, he said. I gave him a slice of calamansi dip in a refined salt. He squirted it in his mouth. But it was too late. Nothing could chase her. The calamansi did not help him. I don't think even a coconut would have helped him. What is wrong, Joe? I ask. Nothing, he said. The first drink always affects me this way. He was panting hard and tears were rolling down his cheeks. Well, the first drink always acts like a minesweeper, I said. But this second one will be smooth. I filled his shell for the second time. Again, I diluted my drink with Joe's whiskey. I gave Joe his shell. I noticed that he was beaded with perspiration. He had unbuttoned his collar and loosened his tie. Joe took his shell but did not seem very anxious. I lifted my shell and said, 
Here is to America. I was trying very hard to be a good host. Here's to America, Joe said. We both gilled our drinks. Joe reacted in a funny way. His neck stretched out like a turtle's, and now he was panting like a carabao gun ambok. He was grasping his tie with one hand, then he looked down on his tie, threw it to one side, and said, Oh Christ, for a while I thought it was my tongue. After this, he started to tinker with his teeth. What's wrong, Joe? I asked, still trying to be a perfect host. Plenty. This damn stuff had loosened my bridge work. As Joe exhaled, a moth flying around the flickering flame fell dead. He stared at the dead moth and said, and they talk of DDT. Well, how about another drink? I asked. It is what we came here for. No thanks, he said. I am through. Surely you will not refuse my hospitality? Okay, just once more. I poured the juice in the shells and again diluted mine with whiskey. I handed Joe his drink. Here's to the Philippines, he said. Here's to the Philippines, I said. Joe took some of his drink I could not see very clearly in the flickering light, but I could have sworn I saw smoke out of his tears. This stuff must be radioactive, he said. He threw the remains of his drink on the Nipa wall and yelled at, Blaze! Blaze! Good damn you, Blaze! Just as I was getting in the mood to drink, Joe passed out. He lay on the floor flat as a starfish. He was in a class all by himself. I knew that soldiers had to be back in their barracks at a certain time, so I decided to take Joe back. I tried to lift him. It was like lifting a carabao. I had to call four of my neighbors to help me carry Joe. We slung him on top of my carabao. I took my bolo from my house and strapped it on my waist. Then I proceeded to take him back. The whole barrio was wondering what had happened to the big Americano. After two hours, I arrived at the airfield. I found out which barracks he belonged to and took him there. His friends helped me take him to his cot. They were glad to see him back. Everybody thanked me for taking him home. As I was leaving the barracks to go home, one of his buddies called me and said, Hey you, how about a can of beer before you go? Oh, no thanks, I said. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. That was a good story, isn't it? I know you love it too, so what are we waiting for? Let's discuss more details about the story. The literary story We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers, written by Alejandro Rosas, is a piece that talks about the time shared between two characters having a conversation over some drinks. The characters were of two different races. One is Filipino, while the other is an American who is called Joe all throughout the story. It was set during a time where the Americans were coming back around the Philippines, and these were at good terms that this story took place. There were still some Americans stationed around the Philippines, and the farmers often see them. Who are the characters in the story? Great. We have the American soldier as well as the Filipino farmer. In the beginning of the story, the farmer is on the field, on the rice field, and he is together with a Datu. Who do you think is Datu? Exactly. Datu is a carabao who helped the farmer plow the rice field. While he was in the rice field, he saw the American soldier trying to find the nearest bar in the barrio. Upon knowing that there is no bar in the barrio, the Filipino farmer mentioned that there is a drink that Filipino used to drink. And what do you think is the name of the drink? Very good! The name of the drink is Lambanog. Moving forward, when the soldier decided to drink the Lambanog, the Filipino decided to give it to him. 
While they are walking to the Nipa hut, the American observed the surroundings and he was amazed with the coconut trees. If in the Philippines we have coconut trees, what do you think America have? Great! They do have pine trees which symbolizes America because it is tall and stately. When they arrive at the Nipa hut, the farmer warmly welcomed Joe. Then, he prepared their drinks as well as the calamansi. How do Joe describe calamansi? Exactly, a lemon and is used to pair with the drinks and is called chaser. Along this way of reading the story, these terms have been mentioned which greatly reflects Philippines. We have Carabao, Barrio, Lambanog, Nipa House, and Coconut Trees. This reflects Philippines, a Carabao that is always helpful to every farmer, a barrio where you can find a neighborhood in the city, and the Lambanog which is a product of coconut trees that can also be used as a vinegar, a Nipa House, and a Coconut Trees that symbolizes Philippines. These features are part of the local color. Hmm, you might wonder, what is local color? Local color is a style of writing derived from the presentation of the features and peculiarities of a particular locality and its inhabitants. Are we clear with that? Alright, then let us have an activity to make sure that you understand the first part of the discussion. All you have to do is to determine the defined words. You are to select your answers from this box. You have 5 seconds to answer each sentence. List down these choices so that you could have a reference in where you could choose your answer. Once again, continue gaining your tickets. Here we go. Number 1. It is a traditional Filipino distilled palm liquor made from coconut palm sap. It should age 48 hours to achieve its taste. What do you think is the answer for number one? If your answer for number one is Lambanog, congratulations, you got the right answer. Take this ticket as a reward. Number two. This is also known as Bahay Kubo. It is made of wood or bamboo. The roof is made of nipa or anahaw. Did I just hear nipa hat? You're right! Congratulations! Take this ticket as your reward! Number 3. It is considered a tree of life that also symbolizes Philippines. It is tall, it has cocoa, and is planted widely. What do you think is the answer for number 3? Is your answer coconut tree? You're right! Congratulations! You may take this ticket as your reward. It is known as Philippine lemon, which looks like lemonade. What do you think is the answer for number 4? Is your answer calamansi? You got it right! Congratulations! Take this ticket as a reward! Number 5. It is farmer's best friend and is very helpful in agricultural works. They plow field, carry, and move heavy objects and can also be used as a transportation. What do you think is the answer for number 5? If your answer for number 5 is Carabao, you got it right! Congratulations! Take this ticket as a reward! It is great to know that you are learning so fast. Have you gained enough tickets? Here's a twist. You have to gain 15 tickets so that we can move on or you can move on to the next level. If you don't have much tickets, do not worry. We have another activity reserved for later. 
once again, local color is a representation of a place or a region so that it could leave a mark to the reader that it is their identity and for them to be able to be understood. Just like your answers, we can determine the representation based on the story we have. Let us now discuss the characteristics of the characters in the story. The title itself, We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers, already describes what are Filipinos, that Filipinos are mild drinkers. Based on the farmer, Filipinos only drink for three reasons. What do you think is the reasons for the Filipino to drink? 1. If we are very happy. 2. If we are very sad. And 3. For any other reasons. Meanwhile, when Joe approached the farmer, he was looking for a bar in the barrio. And why do you think is he finding a bar in the barrio? Because of course, he wanted to drink. Which clearly means that Americans and Filipinos have an opposite when it comes to liquor or when it comes to alcoholic drinks. When they are on their way, the American soldier was very amazed with the coconut trees. Coconut trees symbolizes the Philippines because it starts up to the sky and leaves sway down to earth, as if remembering the land that gave it birth. Filipinos are very known for being hospitable because Filipinos always help even to strangers, whether we know them or we do not know them. We always help and we do not hesitate to helping other people. Going back to the story, despite the differences that our characters have, they still manage to get along with each other. This means that you can still understand someone's personality or someone's identity once you accept and respect each other's ideas and beliefs. The way the farmer accommodated the soldier even when he passed out, Joe was sent back to their barracks. This just means that we can accept what they are and still do what we are used to and what is right. We help, we accommodate because that is one of the Filipinos' traits to be generous and hospitable. Okay, I know you clearly understand our lesson. That is why I prepared our last activity. All you have to do is to answer fact or bluff. This is your last chance to gain more tickets so that you could be able to move forward to our next adventure. Make sure to gather 15 tickets and I will convert it to one certificate. For this activity, I will give you 3 seconds to make sure that you can answer all of these questions. Are you ready? I know you are always born ready. Let's go! Is it a fact or bluff? 1. Joe is a Filipino farmer. 2. It's a bluff! Congratulations, you may now take your ticket. Number two, Datu is a carabao that helps farmer plow the rice field. If your answer is fact, you got the right answer. Congratulations! The American soldier is a mild drinker. The right answer is... A bluff! You may now collect your ticket. A pine tree symbolizes Philippines because it is tall and stately. It's a bluff! Congratulations! You may now take your ticket. Filipinos are always known as very hospitable. Is your answer fact? Correct! Congratulations! Great job everyone! Have you gained 15 tickets? That's great! And because of that, here is your badge for your next adventure! To sum everything up, we are able to understand someone through literature.
All you have to do is to make reading a habit and explore while you can. With that, you can understand more about the world and its people. Thank you so much for attentively listening and I will see you in our next episode. Bye-bye!